So if you didn't know, I do this YouTube channel thing alongside my day job, where I work as a security researcher at Huntress. We all work remotely and we use Slack to communicate, and the other day I got a seemingly random DM from a coworker of mine in the SOC, or the Security Operations Center. He said, off the top of your head, do you recall where to find unsaved notepad notes on disk? I recall a while ago you were able to pull it from somewhere, I just don't remember where exactly. And then he comes back with this screenshot, which is an unsaved buffer in notepad, which means the user just had notepad up on their computer, the program was open, and they were writing in and typing, we got disconnected, wait, I'll call you back with... I'm assuming a different number, and then this unfinished sentence, which I'm assuming is going to say, do not talk to anyone else. And this isn't something that someone would usually type into their notepad window. This looks more like someone, the user, the end user and victim is currently on the phone with a scammer. So I respond back in our DMs, uh, that's a scam phone call. And at this point, my teammate brings us to the larger channel and he pings and tags the whole security operations center support team. Hey, can we get a phone call to this individual right now, as soon as possible? The user on this host, that computer, their machine, is currently in the process of actively being scammed. Huntress detected the following, a rogue Screen Connect install, ConnectWise Screen Connect, one of those remote control applications. Huntress has been tracking a number of malicious threat actors, convincing users via email to run malicious Screen Connect or ConnectWise control installers that give the threat actor remote access to the host. Evidence suggests that the user, redacted, likely fell for a fake tech support scam. The user was seen running Quick Assist, giving access to a remote user who then deployed a malicious Screen Connect instance on this host, downloaded from the domain jsrcare.help. Evidence from the user's notepad.exe tab shows that the user is getting actively scammed. Remediation instructions are what you would expect. Stop the service for Screen Connect, remove the application, and try to help carve out and make sure none of those footholds or persistent footholds are present. And being an endpoint detection and response platform, of course we can see the processes that have been invoked, when and where, and what we should stop. The SOC analyst had just tried to sound the alarm and ask, hey, can anyone on the support team, can anyone get on the phone with this individual as soon as possible? We got another team member chiming in, he's on it. Analyst responds, thank you. Knowing how these scammers work, they'll probably try anything they can just to get back on the phone with them. Our support member chimes in though, I tried to call them twice, got voicemail both times, I'll send out an outreach and start a ticket. So while this is happening, just to add some background context, the SOC analyst says, look, we had a signal pop for a rogue and malicious Screen Connect instance. Just before the Screen Connect signal popped, we had a contextual signal for Quick Assist. If you didn't know, Quick Assist is the installed by default and built-in Microsoft solution for remote control, RMM being the acronym here for Remote Monitoring and Management, and that's typically used in scammer situations. The analyst then noticed Notepad was opened and he thought he'd use that little trick, Forensic Artifact, to be able to extract and uncover the unsaved buffer in those Notepad windows. With that, all the clues were coming together. This is an active scam. But then the analyst says, uh-oh, they released the host. And what that means is that they released them from host isolation. As I was telling you earlier, when a computer was quarantined and moved away from its friends, they said, nah, it's fine, put it back in play. Put that computer back in the field, the situation is okay. Now this worried us because that could very well just be, again, the end user and the victim, totally brainwashed and convinced, I need to send this money, I need to get these gift cards, I need to drive to whatever Bitcoin ATM, right? Another team member chimed in though, and they say, hey, look, they actually approved the remediations though. All hope is not lost, I think they understand. With that said though, the remediations and the automated remediations only solves the technical end of this equation, not the person end of it. Like, oh, we can clean up quick assist and screen connect, but if the scammer calls back and the person still picks up the phone and they're still talking with them, it doesn't help. They can just reinstall screen connect quick assist and control them via phone instructions. 
But anyway, the case continues as we see execution of cmd.exe. The process for command prompt opened up on that victim computer. That matches the same scenario we were alluding to earlier, where the scammer acting as a tech support individual, total fake scam, opens up command prompt, has them run netstat and see all these hackers affecting their computer. This is really cool though, because we see the teamwork kicking in. Team member asks, look, can we isolate and call without a report? We already got the report out the door. Analyst says, look, sorry, I should have clarified that CMD execution was prior to the report and the original isolation. But then analyst realizes, oh, goodness gracious. He takes a look at the browser history. So whether you're using Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Google Chrome, whatever, he takes a look at the archive, the catalog of the places that have been visited on that computer via the user's web browser, and you can see jsrcare.help, title support, a strange t.ly short link for a cancellation and refund form, and then it brings it to docs.google.com, cancellation and refund form, cancellation refund form. They're there present on that page for quite a while, but then suddenly they go to PNC Financial Services and their personal bank. Other team members are chiming in like, oh my goodness, this is not real. And another individual asks the analyst, is this still going on? And I think our analyst just charges on in like unspoken acknowledgement. Yes, it is still happening. He says, I'm going to repull the browser history right now to see if there's anything else. Other team members start rallying the troops, tagging everyone else. Hey, can we jump on this? Can you get in touch with someone at this company? They have this individual, the user, in the middle of being scammed and we're unsure. It's not clear yet if they realize what's going on because they released the machine from host isolation and quarantine pretty quickly, like just minutes after we sent the report. So we are desperately trying to save this victim and stop the active scam, but we aren't sure yet if that user knows it's a scam or not. New team member chimes in, yeah, I'll call. They ran the remediations, but that's likely after they filled out, if they filled out that Google form, right? So we have pretty high confidence the customer was scammed, potentially gave out some private information. We got a ticket all together, making sure we're tracking the process here. Analysts chiming in, I'm mostly concerned now by the bank account being present in their browser history. Eventually, we got it. We got someone, we got a hold of someone who is then in contact with the other. Uh, he's on with the customer, but our team member says, I gotta pass this to someone else. I told him someone else would call and try to take this. We tag another team member. Hey, can you own this? Are you up for it? He says, Roger that, I'm on it. I'm realizing that's still not the individual, the person being scammed. So I'm gonna try another number. I'm gonna call this if no one else has, unless you tell me otherwise. But the team tells me, I think we're good. We've got a representative from the partner to speak with that individual. So no need at the moment. Team confirms, we got a hold of them. They're on the phone now. And I'm like, cool, all right, I'm sorry. I really didn't wanna just be like trying to intrude and barge in on all this, but please, please, please make sure you run through what just is the save script for someone going through a scam. Number one, get off the phone with the scammer. Get off the phone with that person. Do not talk to them. Do not respond to anything that they send to you, other text messages or communication, emails, etc. Turn off your computer, leave it unplugged if you have to. Just make sure there is no way they can remote control and get back into your machine. And then when you can later, uninstall whatever they use to get that access. And needless to say, if you filled out that form, talk to your bank, call your bank, notify fraud department, anything you can do to try and clean up this mess before it gets worse. Team member helps chime in and I'm glad they said it outright. If they filled out that Google form, call the bank as soon as possible, report potential fraud. And then, you know, the team starts to celebrate a little bit. Like, hey, we got a hold of someone. We've got some ground. We maybe made a difference here. Start to high five, cheer it up. And look, if we really did get to save the victim right there in the moment, like that's a good feeling. That is pretty fulfilling and meaningful work. Team member says, okay, they seem to have things under control. The user actually hung up right after the threat actor, scammer, took over their computer. The partners really appreciated our persistence on this one and we're grateful that we caught it. Good show and great work to the SOC analysts and the team. Heck yeah, that's a win. 